I'm with a company just coming up on 20 years. Ooh. About to get half of what he ever got. <laughs> He's got the $20 million award. I'm a junior. I'm going to get the 10. $10 million. I came to this country when I was about 21 years old. Couldn't speak English. I didn't say I could speak now. Um, I bought my first car in the dealership. The general manager noticed something about me and came to me and told me, if one day you need work, you come yes, see I me. Did. You come see me. What do I have? He says, I like you. I hope you like me for the right reason. I came in some about three months later. I was the first guy in the dealership that was hired without an application and without an interview. They sent me three months to the fundamental excelling in Michigan. I studied very hard. I came back to the dealership. That gentleman became my mentor. Mentor is a big thing for all of us today. Because you are here, which is very good. There's a lot of people in our agency that are not here right now. They think that they don't need any help. They got it all. They don't have to study, they don't have to learn anything. But the fact, the reason that you are here, that tells me that you want to pick something up and you want to become better at what you do. The thing is this, I got into the car business not knowing that I'm able to. Before I know it, I'm selling 30, 40, 50, 60, I got to 120 cars single-handed, I sold them. I bet you if you go to a dealership, you'll never see a team in a dealership. I'm the first one to build a team within the dealership. I have people that wrote credit applications for me. I have people that wash cars for me. All I did is they put the gloves on my hands, I went in and made the incision. Somebody else sold them up. I was already in another office, in another booth, doing a new incisions. You divide it and see if you sell 120 cars a month, how many you have to close a day? That's a lot. That's a lot. You still got to go to the car. You still got to do meet and greet. And a little bit, we're pretty soon going to spill over to what we do today. We got to do a meet and greet. We got to do what they call fact finding. We got to create a common ground. And I'll explain to you what common ground is. Let's say I talk to you and you tell me you're from Illinois. And I happen to be from Illinois. What high school did you go to? All of a sudden, my sister, your sister went to the same high school. That's called common ground. Once we have common ground, we are the only people that know each other in this room. That will help me later on when I come closer to the close. It's setting up the close. I developed a selling system, 12 points selling system. Um, <clears throat> from there, we went to the car itself, and we did what they call a five-point walk around. Anybody can tell me why do I do a five-point walk around? In the house, it's kind of the same. Why? Observe, meet. Okay. I'm selling features and benefits. I'm making you think that this is going to be on your driveway today at 4 o'clock. I'm selling the product. The thing is, and we're going to talk about that topic. In real estate, we sell, but in a different way. We represent our buyer, let's say. We are truthful to our buyer. If we find ourselves selling our buyer, you're not going to build your business, you're not going to go anywhere. You are here to help your client. For all the things you learn in sales, you got to know how to protect your client for not making a mistake. <clears throat> By doing so, bring the customer into a boot. That boot means the closing boot. We're preparing the patient. We are putting him on the table. I'm not going to go carve him out without putting him under first. Under means what? I use salt. Is this house for you? Can you see yourself buying this house or that car? Whatever the product may be. When that person is ready, then and only then, we go for the close. We had people do the close. And when they couldn't close, they called me. That's what I did. I did the final incision. Then comes the follow-up, the delivery and the follow-up. So let's go back to what, what I'm doing here today. Everybody, please stand up. Stand up. And repeat after me. If it's to be, it's up to me. Okay, sit down. <laughs> Who 
who owns who owns your company right here? Who owns your company? Who owns your company? Who owns it? Yeah. I do. It's my business. Good answer. My Good business. Job. Good answer. <laughs> who do you work for? Myself. You're on the team, right? Yes. But you still work for yourself. Yeah. Okay. The reason you are here. Thank you. <laughs> you see, the reason you are here because you want to invest in yourself. You want to get to a point where you can find more customers. And when you get the customer, you're going to learn the subdivision you're going to. I, I went to a lot of tours. I know which subdivision has a gate and which subdivision doesn't have a gate. I know which subdivision has a guard gate and which one doesn't have nothing at all. <clears throat> From time to time, an agent will come to my office. Joe, I'm trying to get to Truman Country Club. Do you know how to get there? I got clients in the car. What that tells me that we gotta learn a lot of things, especially where we're going. But we're going when we're going to the individual person, you have to invest in yourself. In other words, the one thing you gotta always work very hard on is control. When the client meets you and you know about the houses, you know the name of the company that built it, do you know exactly when they build the subdivision? The subdivision has a community pool, doesn't have a community pool, what kind of people live there? You know a lot to tell your client. Your client will start looking at you and says, hey, he's valuable, he's got a lot of information. This other guy had, didn't know anything. Going back to this, you run your company, you are the CEO of your company. So let's just assume you bought a store. You bought a store. Let's just assume you're gonna sell a product at that store. You're gonna have to open it in the morning, right? Okay. When, when we open the store, we hope that somebody's gonna walk in to buy our product. In real estate, we don't define it that way, but we really own a store. Are we there? Are we there in that store? So when the client comes, are we gonna be there to help them sell or buy the product? A lot of us don't understand that we have to be there. Anybody tell me what there is? Available. Huh? Available on phone, text, person. Uh, let's say you gotta do an open house. Let's say you gotta open the door and you gotta go home. You're not there. Okay, you gotta be there. Right. You can watch. You can watch the football game because I know you like that, <laughs> and not be there. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, we have to be there, wherever there is. So, we work, and maybe we'll take a day off. You're not gonna open the store today. But you're gonna say to yourself, boy, I'm paying rent. I better be there. I better sell something because the rent is coming up. We have to look at our business every day to open that store. The question is, do we look at it that way? Okay, so we open the store and nobody comes in. What are we gonna do about it? Maybe we have the wrong product. Maybe people that don't know about us. Maybe we're gonna advertise. Maybe we're gonna put in the paper. Maybe we're gonna put in TV. Maybe we're gonna put a chicken in the corner to, with an arrow to show our stories. So what I'm trying to say is we run our business. <clears throat> when I got into real estate many years back, I had no clients. They told me in real estate school that everybody has about 180 people in my circle of influence. I looked at all the names in my circle of influence. I said, who's gonna, buy, who's gonna buy a house for me within the next week or two? It took me three months to go to a real estate school. It took me another month or so to do all my tests. I got two dollars in college. I got two cars I gotta make a payment. I got a mortgage. So okay, so I spent three months in school. It took me a month to do all my testing. Then I had to go and interview agencies I finally found my agency. I got into real estate. Probably take me 60 days to sell my first house. Maybe 60 days after that to close. If you add it all up together, there was no income. You had to do something. So I knew one thing, Joe, what are you gonna do? I wanna look for a million dollar house. You can do 700, you can do 600. I look for a million dollar house. I asked permission to see it open and I did. Me and my wife got in, they didn't put the table by the front door. No one got past their table before they gave her the name, number, email, everything else. House, cough it up. 
as they are looking, Linda was already writing the thank you letter. I'm showing the house, we'll take a new one. Same thing happened, time and time again. So let's assume we had 15 people in the open house that day. What I did, before we did the open house, I come into the house and I'm saying to myself, just like I sold a, a car, should I start from this side or should I go from this side? Now, this side is more exciting. So I started learning, okay, the house was built in 1991. This is the name of the builder. It's partially tiled, partially flat, three and a half baths. I memorize all that. And as people come in, I told them, welcome to our open house. House was built in 1991, was built by Sasson Church. Uh, it's got a split floor plan. Let me show you those rooms, let me show you that room. And something happened. They wanted to buy either that house or they wanted to buy me. And if they wanted to buy me, I went across the street, so in that house. The thing is that a lot of us that sitting right here wanted the good. We did open house after open house, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every day. Okay? We got to a point where we couldn't see them open anymore because we were showing houses. So I said to myself, Joe, how are you gonna get a listing? I said, Joe, don't worry about listing. Don't worry about listing. You're gonna become a farmer, and you're gonna put a lot of seeds in the ground. Every time we sold the house to a buyer, I knew that's a coming listing. <coughs> so in the beginning, we're doing 80 to 85% buyers, and before you know it, now we are sitting at 65, 70% on the sell side, and only 35, 40% on the buy side. I happen to increase the size of our team to bring that gap to 50-50. Abby's on our team. So, it worked very well for me. I now have over a thousand plus customers that bought from us, and they are calling us, without me even knowing, they're calling us to come and list their houses. <clears throat> Which gets me to another point. When we do it, and people really get the value from us, and understand that we look out after them. In other words, Jack, if I was you, let's go outside, we'll talk, I really, don't think you should buy this house. And let me tell you why. You got a road behind you. You can see the power line over there. Your driveway is a little stiff, because when you park it, and you take it out of park, you're gonna hear bang. That's why I think we should look for some more houses. People like that. They really know that you're looking out for them. I'm very famous for that. Joe, when are we gonna buy a house? I says, when we get the right one. That's what we do. So when people decide to buy a house, we don't ask them for the order. We don't ask them to write it up. They are asking me, Joe, we want this one. Okay, this one is okay, we'll sell it to you. Once they take delivery of the home, we stay in touch with them all the way. We may take them out for dinner, we're gonna give them a closing gift, and we're gonna stay in touch with them. Every two, three months, they get a letter, a phone call, or we take them again for dinner. We spend a lot of time with our customers. Customers are very loyal to us. Very, very loyal to us. In other words, they know we didn't fake it. They know they got everything from us. They know we looked out for them. They know that, I tell them, look, I'm gonna get paid in the end, only when I do a good job. And besides, we have bills to pay. So we gotta get some. <clears throat> Which brings me to this point. You want to start a business, you want to become the CEO of that business, you want to have good customers. <clears throat> you want to get your operation to 100% customer satisfaction. 100% customer satisfaction. Because we are in sales. Of course we sell differently. We don't sell our clients. But when we take a listing, we sell the property to the other people. So we have to do the same thing and I'll talk about it in a minute, what happens on the listing side. Our customers, I know, when they go out that title company, when, they, when that thing closed, I know they're happy. And if they're happy, I know they're going to my special group. It's my retention group. Retention, retention, retention. If somebody's in a business for 30 years and you see him sending cards and sending letters introducing himself, don't you think something's wrong? Something's wrong. Either that or he's building a, a huge team with about 25 people. 
What I'm trying to say is, is if I capture close to 100% of all my customers, they're gonna make sure I'm taken care of. And you gotta work making sure that they are happy. 100% customer satisfaction. I took a dealership about 35 years ago. Their CSI score was somewhere around 66%. What does it mean? If 10 people bought a car, six, only 6.6 .6 people are happy. The other three are talking bad about you. All right? I was hired to run this dealership to bring their customer satisfaction, also sales, up to 100%. I was able to do it by improving systems within the dealership. I got it to 98.9%. .9%. For that name brand, for that name plate, in the Southwest, it was unbelievable. They flew me out to Hawaii and they took care of me. So, what happens when you get your customers to about 98.9%? .9 Here's what happens. Most of us always will go and pick a rock, see if we can find, oh, maybe I'll find a buyer over there. You know where your buyers are? Are with that client that just bought the, car, the house from you. He's gonna make sure that he will talk to all his relatives, to all his friends, without you knowing, you're gonna get a phone call. I want you to find us a house just you, you found Bill. So what's happening to me is this. A lot of us spend money on Zillow, on Realtor.com, we, we buy leads, we buy all this stuff. We have to regroup and come back to basics. If we take care of our clients and they swear by you, you're gonna be a very rich person. That's how I operate my business. <clears throat> there are people who go out there and knock on doors. You ever heard of those people? <laughs> Is it? He's usually in this room on uh, Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me how many times I've knocked on the door. Obviously you know the answer. I don't have to. I chose a different route. You ever find something on your windshield wiper or right by your door? Or did you ever go to a bus stop and see somebody's face? Or better yet, in Safeway, you see the divider between my groceries and your groceries with a phone number? We don't have to do that. We have to go back to basics and work with our clients. Make them very happy. Make sure that you do a good negotiation in the house and make sure that the appraisal comes higher than what they pay. You're gonna be a hero. And they will make sure that you will always survive. So back to basics. 100% customer satisfaction is your goal. The one thing I implement in my dealership, if a customer is living with a car and is really unhappy, <coughs> lock the door, don't let him go. Call Joe. What's wrong? Well, they told me it'd be 425 a month, and now it's 535. What happened? Well, they told me, here's health and life insurance if I die, an extended warranty. The rate was supposed to be 3.6, now it's 6.7. What's going on here? See what I'm saying? What you just did is you're gonna send somebody out and he's gonna tell everybody not to come to you or to the dealership. No. <clears throat> I buy the guy a drink, we sit down, of course, a seven up or a coffee. <laughs> What's the problem? I says, you stay right here. I go up to the F&I office. The guy did what he's supposed to. He's making money. But you wreck them over the call. You don't do that. I says, go back to what it is, okay? You're not selling him this, you're not selling him that. I'll be right back. Sir, come with me. Sit him down. He got the payments that was promised to him, okay? I told him, I'll tell you what, you come back in a week from now, I'll fill your tank again with gas. And if you want to, come the week after that. I'll do it again. I made his friend out of him, I took a negative, and made it into a positive. What happened to our dealership? Somebody bought a Trans Am. He went for his first oil check. They took the car out. And the mechanic, a kid, says, I think that car was in an accident. Takes the car, drives into the dealership, and tells the dealer, this car was in an accident. I want another car. That manager was dealing with him, didn't want to listen to him. Next morning, we come to work, channel seven on your side. Okay, they're all in front marching. 
You know what it cost that manager to take the car back and give him another car and make him happy? Nothing. Too late, you're already into it. It's on TV, it's everywhere. Don't buy a house, a car, and such and such. They took him to court, the dealer itself had to court. He had to take his Rolex off, all his gold and everything, so that he looks poor. He lost. It cost him $270,000, plus he had to give him a brand new car. So we always have to understand, does the, is the customer always right? The answer is yes. You just gotta know how to work around it. Try to, try to work yourself to a point where all the clients that bought a car or a house from you, you know in your heart, they love you to death and they'll stay with you. <clears throat> Let's talk about another thing. And I got Don here. Years ago, when Don got into business, Don did not have a team. Am I correct? When you start, you are by yourself. What I'm trying to say is, the avenue of information is so great today that sometimes you clients, you know, know a lot about whatever it is more than you. In other words, it wasn't a spur of a second. You got everything on the screen. I think if some of you struggle, struggle, work with a mentor, somebody that proved that he knows what he's doing, that someone that knows how he gets clients, somebody knows how to negotiate a contract, somebody knows how to follow on a customer and keep customer satisfaction to the highest level. I think for you guys who not, don't work on a team, I believe that the mentorship is very important. That gentleman that hired me in a dealership when I was 22 years old, didn't know, but he did me a great favor. He taught me everything I know today. He even went ahead and showed me how to do arithmetic, how to put the number, how to put not this number, but that number, to make it look good. I was a closer. He used to call me the hammer. I was the hammer. In real estate, we don't do it. We are brokers. In real estate, we cannot. The only place we negotiate is with opposition. In the car business, when somebody came to see me, he was not a representative. I was a trained one, they are not trained. Because I was trained and they were not, I had the upper hand. I closed them very easily. I used to go from boot to boot, close it, close it, close it, close it, close it, and I walk around with a tanky cocktail in my arm, arm. I used to walk like that. That's how I used to walk. I used to close if the agent sold the car. If the agent didn't do a good job with the car, didn't do the five point walk around, did not show the features and benefits, and told them why. Well, let me ask you this. When you walk in the showroom, is the car expensive? Any car you look at, it's too much money. My job was to feature the benefits, show them everything, and then the cars only have price. That's what I used to do. So, going back to what we do here, to go with the team. <coughs> See, most of us go like this wait a minute, I'm going to sell a million dollar house. Now, 3%, what does that come out to be? Got to be about, what, $30,000? Mm -hmm. Now, that's a lot of money. Now, if I sell six, seven of them this month, I'm gonna have a lot of money. What's the percentage you take of agents that work from the beginning to end and sell a million dollar house? What would you say? Now, people go through the entire career and never sell a million dollar house, right? There's a lot of them. <coughs> Most agents don't. I'm sorry? Most agents don't sell. Most agents well, don't. I would say somewhere about 60% will never see a million dollar sale. And that's a fact. So for those of you who don't work with a team or have a mentor that you can rely on, ask a question at the spur of the moment. Call it nine o'clock at night. What do I do now? How should I, how should I handle this? What's the verbiage you think I should put here? I think today, because the customers are more savvy, they are almost more savvy than us. We need to jump on all the ears because like Don Matheson has so many years in it, if you work with a gentleman like him, not that I'm pushing him, I'm not. What, what, what I'm saying is his, his agent are much better off than somebody else because they got him in their back pocket. And a lot of us don't go to the team because we think, oh, Okay, so I'm gonna sell it. I'm gonna make $30,000. I'm gonna have to give Don Matheson about half of that. But what if, because of Don Matheson, you sold two of them? 
or three of them, or four of them. The math does work. So I think for most of us who are here, you are here because you want to learn, you want to grow. I think if you have a mentor in your background, you can have whatever deal you do with them. I think that would help you. I see it now. I'm starting to grow my team. Abby just joined us. Abby is with us three weeks. She's going on her second step. She's actually going to do a listing. I didn't get a listing till I was four months in business because I didn't work with the team. I was the team. So, because clients are more savvy today, I think you're better off. Now, you got a listing, right? <clears throat> okay. Did you put the listing in? No. Somebody else did it, right? Yeah. Did you take the pictures? Mm -hmm. Somebody else did it, right? Okay. So now, she's gonna get a flyer soon that she didn't do for the house, which means the team helps her a lot by making her look good. Most of us have to understand that today, if you take a photograph, okay, wait a minute, why should I spend $500 on this? What if I don't sell the house? I lost that $500. See, a lot of us use the iPhone as another, another way of going ahead and advertising our houses. So what I'm trying to say is you get a lot of help. And today, because the customer is a lot more savvy, they go online and they read a lot about what it is, what the title does, what escrow it is, all that kind of stuff. We gotta be ready for them with a lot more knowledge. <clears throat> Let me go to the next thing. Those are blank pages, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just making it look like I'm looking at something. I'm okay. making this shit up. <laughs> You're doing okay. a good job of it, though, I tell you. If we're just... I want to ask everybody in the room, and I'll tell you what I did when I got into the business. I went on three tours every week. Anybody been on a tour lately? Okay, I don't see a lot. Why did I go on a tour? Anybody help me? Why do I go on tools? Huh? They're in the area. They're in the area. Inventory. Okay. Okay. There's a few reasons I go on a tour. What's I'm sorry? Network. Network? Yeah, get to know other realtors. Okay. Don't you agree you enlarge your capacity of knowing what's out there, what your money buys you? Okay. You got there, you know how to get there. Most of us say again when we go show houses. We, we buy a house with good turning ratio because we do a lot of U-turns, right? Because we get lost. <laughs> when, I thought you were doing the kiki dance. The what? I thought you were doing the kiki dance first. Oh, yeah, I am. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say, when I went on tours, let me give you an example. I'm one week in the business. I'm in an open house. A lady walks in, and I told the story to Abby. A lady walks in, and she goes like this. How much for this house? I says, a million one. Why is it so much money? My friend over there bought one for C50. I says, yeah, but it's outside the subdivision. It's not in this subdivision. Well, all your salespeople are the same. All your realtors are the same. Do you have something else? I don't like this. I take her around the corner. She sees the house. She didn't like it. She goes, look, if I buy a lot and I build a 5,000 square foot home, what will it cost me? I says, okay, I'll do the math. In those days, 20 years ago, it's about $200 square foot. You said you want 5,000? Square foot. So 200 into 5, that makes it a million, right? The life will cost you 200, that's a million too. She goes, listen to me. If you can find a house for me for 800 in a gated community, in a gated community with a bonus room, five bedroom, I, I want a kitchen outside, I want a pool, I want a slide. She got it, wants everything. I'll buy right now. Here's what happened to me. Linda looked at me, she told I'm nuts. What are you doing right now? She goes, I'm looking at the house. I said, okay. I go tell the kids and the husband to go in your suburban, you're going to follow me. I'm taking you to a new house. We are going to your new house. What do you mean you're going to your new house? I'm taking you to the house you want to see. Where is it? I said, somewhere around Cactus. I'm not going to tell her where it is. She'll go by herself. <laughs> around Cactus, 64th Street in that area. You kidding me? That's where I'm looking. My agent is, is not finding me a house. I said, I'm taking you there. A total stranger. Following me, I called the owner that I met in a, final, in a uh, 
on the tour, he was home. I called him, you remember me? I was in your house Tuesday. I'm bringing your client. I called your agent, your agent didn't answer. I'm coming to your house. We got to the house. They got out of the car, they got into the car and left. I got into the house, this is, this is our house. So he ran that way, she ran that way, they came back, Joe, we're buying the house. <coughs> the after, the dinner, after they saw the house, we talked about it. We sold the house to them. But Joe, what are we gonna do with that house? Don't worry, we'll sell that one too. So they met us somewhere around 3 there in the afternoon that Saturday, that Saturday, we went for dinner, went to the house, we wrote the contract, took the listing, by 12 o'clock tomorrow it sold. So what happened to me? I went, on a, I went on a tour, I learned about the house, they're building a house in Rio Verde, it's closing in three days, he needs the money, he didn't understand what he's telling me, because I know he's ready for me. We made the deal. People own a financial, you own the bank, and you had the money, pay cash. Now, if I never went on that tour, that's all I'm trying to say. If I never went on that tour, you would go like this though. I tell you what, what are you looking for? I look on the computer, if I find something, I'll send it to you. The advantage that I had is because I go on tours and I know what's out there. They couldn't believe it. I didn't look in the computer, I just took them to the house. The same thing happened to me maybe 10, 15 times because I went on tours and I said to my people, I got the house for you, where is it? Follow me. It's awesome. It's power, I got it. So you gotta go into a habit to go either to two or three tours a week. Or if it's too much, two a week. You can go to the Paradise Valley one, the, you can go to the luxury one, it's got sale and Ancala, I think it is. Go to a few good ones, pick or pick one. Go to tours and start learning what people want for the houses, how they get the houses prepared, what they do, look at the flyers, learn about what's going on around you. That's what I did and it helped me a lot. It helped me a lot. I know one thing, the only way I can get business, now if you're hungry, where are you gonna go? Beside home. The restaurant. So who you meet in a restaurant? Hungry people. I bet you do, right? Okay. Who do we meet? Who do we meet in an open house? Hungry people. Huh? We meet buyers. And if you say lookers, don't get negative to get in your way. Stay positive. They are all buyers. You gotta think that way. We did a couple open houses. <clears throat> A lot of us go and open the house, put a sign, we put an ad, but do we really practice to know how to do that open house? How to make that customer that possibly has a realtor that didn't tell you? How do you get him into your camp? How do you make him like you better? You see, we have to practice how to do an open house, to learn your route, how you take him, when you go to the kitchen, where you show him, features and benefits, features and benefits. Find all the new appliances, show it to them. Glorify it, open the door. Here, sir, come here, put, open it. Put his hands in it, let him open it. People get sold that way. Basically, what I'm trying to say, I got my first year and second year out of open houses. Nobody gave me a lead, nobody helped me out, nobody did nothing for me. So this guy walks into another open house and he goes, yo, I have a $2.6 million house. I went with that luxury guy, all he sells is million dollar homes. I know you knew. And I know you never sold a million dollar house. And I know one thing, if I can't view that listing, you're gonna kill it to get it sold. Because he never sold one. He gave me the house. I was there every day. I was watching the landscaper, work on the grass, making sure everything is okay. We sold the house. I sold the house and sold him another one. He took me because he knew how I'm going to work, and that's exactly what I did. I was there with every showing, which I'm going, where I'm going to this next part. I found out because I was in the car business, and I used to sell cars. The car will not sell by itself. You have to be there, you have to do the five-point walk around. What I do with a lot of my listings, my expensive ones, what do I do? I'm there. 
The word there comes back. When people knock on the door, guess who's opening the door? Me. The average selling price on million dollar homes is very high. They don't get sold that quick. There's not that many people, a million plus people walking around. That agent is gonna bring it to my listing. Never been there before. Never been there before. What is he really gonna do to help me sell that house? What is he really gonna do? He's gonna stay out I think that's way. the kitchen and the master is over there. Joe, we are done. Thank you. That's what really happens. Some of you look at the lockbox and look at the entry and look at the exit. A lot of agents have million plus houses on lockboxes. I think those days are over. I really do. If you get a listing anywhere from five, six, seven even, be there. Oh, it takes work to do that. You see, I'll tell you one thing. I think I get paid too much money. I think I get too much money. Because for the work I do to make, I don't know, 700, 800 to a million plus, I think I get paid too much money. I wish everybody in the room can say that. I think it's a lot of money for what we do. I really do. So, do I have to help my cause? Yes. So if I have a million plus house, no lockbox. No lockbox. When I take the, the house, not like I do an open house, I train myself through the house, and I'm saying to myself, shall I take him here first? No, maybe I should go there first. And then I make a spiel. I make the story about the house. And I mimic it time and time and time again. So if you come to my house, instead of being there five minutes, sometimes it's an hour, an hour and a half. The longer they're in the house, the closer to, those, to that cell you are. So what I want to explain to you is, if you can, if you get a listing, try to be there. Things change. There's a lot of, <laughs> how many million dollar houses are in Scottsdale, Mr. Madison? A thousand, two hundred? Million and up. We're all competing for that customer that's gonna buy ours. So if you're looking for two million dollars, why should you buy this one when you can buy this one? Or that one? The difference is, that agent that's gonna be there, gonna tell them the story about the house, how they changed the roof, when they changed the roof, am I, do I have enough time? How much time do I have? No, you still have about 10 minutes. Okay. 15. If you tell them the story, you tell them about the warranties and everything comes with the house, it's more believable. I do have the paperwork, I do have the warranties, I got everything for you. So I had a house that we just sold in Paradise Valley. The lady flew in from Denver, walked in with the agent, and I said to the agent, would you mind? Would you mind? You've never been here. You don't know where the guest house is. You don't know nothing. Let me show it to him. I'll be very nice. Go, go ahead, Joe. <clears throat> I had two, two of them at the same time. One I parked on the side in, in the living room, and one I had outside of the guest house. Both of them sent me offers. I got two offers that day. As a matter of fact, I made one deal was I was on an airplane to Europe. I made the deal on the phone. I called my customer in Palm Springs. Guess what? You just sold your house. Well, what price? I said, would you take full price? Oh, yeah. I said, you just sold the house. So, that's what's starting to work for me. I realized that if I put a lockbox, people come and go, they don't care. They don't see the value. So that's what I'm starting to do. <clears throat> How many of us that not working with the team really went ahead and perfected a listing presentation? Anybody did a listing presentation before? Okay. Do you think you're good with it? I'm okay. pretty good with it. Every one of us should study it, write it, tell the story to yourself. Because one day you're gonna be called there. I know, because I go in. And when I go in, I know I got six ahead of me. So in other words, if you have the best presentation, okay, and you got you convince your clients or those clients that you are the best in what you do, you're showing <laughs> the thing here is like medicine. Medicine they will never ask him if you ever sold a million dollar house.
And sometimes when you go into an expensive house, people go like this to you. Did you ever sell a million dollar house? Let me think. But let me tell you something. If you work on a group, there, they, that's, they did sell million dollar homes. So you did. <clears throat> I remember when I took my first listing over a million, they asked me, did you ever sell a million dollar home? I said, no, that's the guy that hired me. But sometimes I want to make sure you got it. So, you got to have pamphlets, you got to have materials, you got to have all the things that's going to make you shine, that's going to make you different from the agent that just left 10 minutes ago. So you got to work on listing presentation. <clears throat> Joe, also, like, you might tell them how many people you've gotten as clients that you went and met and that were buyers represented by another agent and then called you after. Thank you, Abby. Because I'm in the houses, because I don't put lock boxes, that means I have to drop everything. I have a meeting, meeting comes second. Selling a house comes first. They have to put butter on my bread. I run to the house and I show the house. Here's what happens to us. It's a phenomenon that I've never seen before. She's taking a list. She got a listing from one of those people. So I'm representing in Ancala a customer. A customer comes with his clients. I take over, I sell the house, they buy the house. Two years go by, I get a phone call. Guess who called me? The customer that bought the house with his agent, a Remax agent from Fountain Hills, okay, is calling me to put the house on the market. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything illegal. I shined when I sold the house. The way I showed the house, they bought the house because of me. They wanted that same person to represent them again at that house. So it happens to me, <laughs> I can tell you about seven or eight of them, and it just happened to me within the last year or two. I had nothing to do with the people. My fiduciary was to the seller, but yet when it come time, they called me because I was where? The word is there, right? There. If you're not there, nothing is going to happen. Thank you for bringing it up. So Joe, <clears throat> how would you suggest that everybody kind of practice their listing presentation? Do you think they should go with a friend, somebody else, or just a total stranger? Yeah, if that they, they work in a group, uh, Don, when you go to a listing appointment, you do the presentation. Anybody in your group does it? Yes. So everybody lists well, the house, that's the one? We won't talk about that next. Next week. Okay. So Don's going to be here next week as well. Okay, I'm coming to that one. <laughs> I'll, talk, I'll talk about not not to say anything because I'm here as a student, Joe. You're a student. Here to learn from you. Okay. Thank you, sir. And I've always respected Thank you. you. And we've always had a good relationship. We've always we always do. Open dialogue. So and you have to understand that I love what we do. I'm a student of the business. I love all of you. You're all here to learn. And I know you are here. That's good because a lot of you are not here. A lot of you are not here, and that's not good. Like when we go to the convention, right? Right. We go once a year to the International Convention, Las Vegas, Nevada. It used to be all over the country, now they're doing it in Vegas. How many people really go to that convention from the office, 200 plus agent? I think last year we had about eight. Eight. Doing good. <laughs> We're doing good. You see, I'm going to go back to this first line here. You are an individual commodity. You are your company. You have to invest in yourself. So what's in Las Vegas? Rows and rows of training. What do you want to learn? How to take a listing? You walk in, they teach you how to take a listing. You want to know how to become a buyer agent? They teach you how to become a buyer agent. But yet, now let me see. Two tanks. Vegas and back, right? What does that cost? So much money. 60 bucks. People are not willing to invest in themselves. You are it. You are the company. Sorry. Is it because of me? <laughs> <laughs> You're high. So You're on what I'm to say is, I took the, I, I got the stage. They put me on stage. I know how to perform. So I did whatever I could to increase my income. When I was in the car business, if you make 250 to 300,000, people go, whoa, you are at. I didn't know 
that if you go to real estate, you can make quadruple that amount. So I did whatever I needed to do to get there as quick as I could. So each one of you, lay down next to somebody that's already been in the business, ask questions, learn. That's the only way you can go up there as quick as possible. Today's market, teams are big. You want to belong to a team. Because that's what's going to increase your volume. That's what's going to increase your support. You will never be lost. And the guy that runs that team has the resources. She doesn't have to spend money on photography. She doesn't have to spend money on flyers. She doesn't have to spend nothing. All I want from her is to be there. And be there many times. Like I explained, when I, <clears throat> when I put this in the machine and I make a copy, a copy comes out. What happens when I sell the house the next day? It's another copy. And then I make another copy. Sometimes what happens, I have two copies to make while this machine is working, so I go to another machine. A sale of a house is just a copy. It's the same steps over and over and over again for meeting and greeting and fact-finding. That's what it is. I'm sure there's a final walkthrough in the end, and I'm sure the phone call is going to ring from the dial company, congratulations, we just recorded it. Tell me it's not the same. It is the same. Different people, different arenas. That's what I'm going to say. So if you can get to make more copies, you're going to get to more money. Make sense? Let's make a lot of copies. Uh, Greg, make sure there's a lot of ink in those machines. We've got it. <laughs> so all I want to say to you is this. My opinion, to me, real estate works. I get to meet people. I never knew how much money is in the value. I was in the car business, 247 a month, 185. I was working with that kind of arena. I come to real estate. This guy buys a three and a half million dollar house for me. Joe, what's today date? I says, it's August 18th. Okay, here's the check. I never knew that. I never knew that. There's so much money in that business. So now that I'm in real estate, I know, I know my strength, I know my weaknesses. And wherever I have a weakness, I work on it. My weakness, and I'll tell you right here, I'm from the old country, I didn't go to school here. Okay, I speak funny, I got an accent, maybe it works for me. But I wanna tell you one thing, with my handicap, and I got it made, any one of you can make it. There's no end to how far you can go. You just follow, start learning, listings, when you meet your client for the first time on a buy side, listen to what they tell you. They don't want a two story, they would want, listen to them, write down. Learn how to do portals. You gotta, you gotta invest in yourself and make sure that you're very valuable to your clients. That's why I found out we're doing good and people are calling us all the time. One more thing. Please, if there's any question at this time, I'd be more than happy to answer. Help me out, I'll help you. Any questions? Don't be, don't be embarrassed. All I wanna to say to you is this. This is the place, this is the time. We're in the United States, we're in Scottsdale, Arizona. One of the best places to sell real estate in the country. I come from Chicago. Come October, everything is white. You can't even find a house. Have you had an agent that gets mad when you're there? And I'm sorry? When you're there for your listing. Listing? Have you when you're there and yes, the person's I like showing, the word there. Go ahead. <laughs> do people do agents get mad that you're showing the home to their buyer? Okay. And what do you do? Because we randomly Most people mad. know who I am. Oh. Most people know my nature. They know that I'm very nice with people. Um, it did happen a few times. Yeah. Well, that person, as a matter of fact, was so far out that they didn't even like me come to their inspection. My client doesn't want you here. So that's understood. That's understood. But most people, I says, look, you have six houses on your list today, right? Let me help you out. I'll answer all your question. It'll be very nice. And I'll be very respectful of your clients. And the clients are listening to me. I'll be very respectful. As a matter of fact, be right next to me. You can listen to what I say. No, most of them really appreciate it. And I had one 84th and Cactus. That was about 
12, 13 years ago. We sold the, the house to the owner for 465000 The owner went and destroyed the house, kept two walls, so we'll call a remodel, so he doesn't have to pay so much. So when you remodel, you don't pay as much in plans and things like that, permits. This couple walks in from West Lake Village. I put it on the market at 2 o'clock, and they arrived maybe at 2.45. I obviously was there, and they walked in. The guy, the owner of the house, owned the Venetian Plaster Company. The house was Venetian Plaster on the exterior as well, not just the interior. That cost like a lot of money. So the couple walked in, and I took her hand. Like the five point walk around the dealership. I took her hand. I said, I want you to feel something. And I rubbed it against the wall. She felt it. I love this. Is this one got a two? I said, let's go over there. Two minutes she goes, can I get red wine? I need a glass of red wine. I can see she's shaking. So she's sitting down. My owners were in the guest house in the back. Give me a bottle of red wine quick. <laughs> <laughs> I poured the glass, I gave one the gentleman, one her. Okay, I want the house. Okay, you want to write it up right here in the kitchen? The agent is there. Yeah, okay. Uh, let me see if I got the next one in my trunk. She wrote the, she wrote the offer, we got the offer. Somebody yesterday came and looked at it. It wasn't on the market yet. She says, I'm interested, I might write an offer. As that offer was accepted, at the dining room table. The other one comes in with a Range Rover. Here's the offer. I'm sorry, ma'am. This couple, they just bought it. She used a few bad words, slammed the door and walked out. Two years ago, I got a phone call from the people who bought their house with a glass of wine. <laughs> now, they're aging. I didn't do anything wrong. I just did a good job. And I was there. Am I right, Dan? Did I do anything wrong? I just helped my cause. OK, all I'm trying to say to you is work on yourself. You are the tool. What I used to do is I used to bring a toolbox to all my sessions, and I used to open it. What you are looking for is all the tools that go into the box. Once you have the tools, you can carry it with you. It's here. So be, make sure you invest in yourself, and when the uh, convention comes around, try to go to the convention. Try to put as much tools as you can in your head. Once you got the tools, all you need is this. <coughs> today, like, you don't even need that. Kids have computers today. That's it. Any other questions? Please. So how do you get listing if you, your team doesn't have any listings? Is it if my team doesn't have it, how do I get a listing? Okay, good question. Um, if I do an open house tomorrow, not only am I going to sell that house, for you to buy this house, you're going to have to sell yours too. So a lot of people have in their mind that they're going to an open house, maybe to sell that house or maybe sell a house. When I get that customer and he likes me, what are you going to do with yours? Oh, we're going to put that one on the market. Well, what about if I come to you tomorrow at 2 o'clock? And I show them what I do. So that's one way I get listings. My phone rings all the time. Because uh, I used to be a great farmer. I sold a lot of buyers. When you sell a lot of buyers, and they're all out there, they're downsizing, they're upgrading, your phone always rings. Always rings. Um, sold a guy a house in McDonald Mountain, Mr. Miller. Mr. Miller came to me and bought a million point five house with gorgeous views. Joe, what am I gonna do with mine? Don't worry, we'll sell it. 875,000 for the house. Dana is another agent in our group. Dana, what do you got? What do you mean? I got views, what do you got? Oh, I got a client. Tell me what time. Take him to the house. The house is not on the market yet. You gotta paint it, gotta do a lot of things. Bring the client, we sold it without being an MLS. So we lost the listing, but we sold it. <laughs> um, so what I'm trying to say is, Mr. Miller is from Chicago. 
and he meets at AJ's where Floyd's. You know where Floyd's? There's an AJ there. And he's got all the guys with the little doggies, with the little poodles, all the guys there on Sunday morning having a bagel and cup of coffee. You guys have no idea what Jose would just did for us. I found the house that I wanted, and just in passing, he sold my house too. Nobody even knew it's on the market. What pictures did I show you today of a new house that we put in the market for $1 million? He was one of the people around the table that listened to him talk. We just took the listing. We put it on the market. What did he buy off the street? 1.35 all. He was around that table with a little pool. See? Okay? So, usually it's two, two in a row. It's the sale of the buyer, the buyer of the sale. So then I have Meadow Hill. Meadow Hill. Sonora State, McDonald Mountain. Guy comes in. House is a little too small for us. I'm back late. It's only 2,600 square foot. Joe, we're going to sell it, but we want to find where we go. We find him a house. 3,500 square foot with gorgeous views. We close on it. Joe, what we're gonna do? I says, don't worry, I'm already working on it. We're gonna have to get you a painter, we're gonna have to get you a grout guy to do the grout. I'm putting that one on the market now. So what I'm trying to say is, it's like a zipper, up and down. One, there's a reaction. So you say, if I don't have any listing, what do I do today? I'm gonna start using the farm. If I have to, I'll do wherever. I'll do wherever. Time is money. Yes. Do you ever discount your listings when you're doing the buy form? Um, I'm going to cover that next time. <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. He's strong. He's strong when it comes to that. Um, a few things we promised ourselves when we went into the market, into, into real estate. Number one, we'll go wherever the client takes us. So if you tell me you want to buy in Peoria, I will not tell you I don't work in Peoria, okay? So we have clients that we sold out there. They are all listings, too. They're coming. They're all listings. Going back to the question, if you give me your house to sell, you'll give me 6%. When I go over there, okay, to find your house, I might take a half off. It's courtesy. Thank you for keeping me around. And the way I explain it, you know what happens to pigs. I cannot be one of those. I'll do that without you even asking. The guy that was sitting at the table with a poodle and I sold a million three fifty house wants me not to sell his. Oh you Joe, you made a lot of money here. What are you gonna do here for me? So <clears throat> on this one, what I'm going to do, if I sell it myself, I'll do it for five. So I did something. Yeah. If I sell it myself, I'll do it for five. The odds is, I probably won't. Like that? <laughs> He's laughing. So that's what I do. But yes, we do this kind of in a second. We, do, we give them a break without them asking us. I can keep it all and get it to it on the buy side, not on the sell side. You gotta get full on the first one because they may not use you on the second. No. Hold on just a second. Sorry about that. You have to always get full price on the first. Don't go don't do it don't do it in reverse. Or you're gonna lose out. And a lot of people will do it like this. This is a million five, this is only six hundred. I'm not gonna give it to them on a million, I'll give it to them on a six. Right? So, all I'm saying is, you gotta get yours on the first, put it in your pocket, then you give them the break. Because you might not get it. Yeah. Then you keep your tree. Because if you get the discount here, you not get that, you lost. So that's what it is. Um, I think the art, I think the art of you meeting your new clients I think the hardest thing for any one of us in this room is not about selling, not about follow-up, is how to get someone today that wants to buy or sell. If we are not in front of a face, meaning a client face, we are not working. We are not working. 
your revenue comes from that customer that's standing in front of you, sitting in front of you, or in your car. If you don't drive around with people and somebody's not sitting in front of you or standing in front of you, you are not working. You are not working. So the single hardest thing for us as realtors, how do we get to that person before somebody else gets it? So the majority of the things that I told you today, CSI, will capture those customers for you if you do a good job. They will not disappear. But I'm talking about the ones that you want to find. So if you don't have a face in front of you, you're not working. I used to go on a dealership. Where's your customer? Where's your customer? So then what I did is this. I spent the two middle pages in the Republic. That will cost me on a weekend sixty to seventy, eighty thousand dollars just for that ad. Okay. So I'm looking at the guys on Monday coming to work at one o'clock and they go stand there waiting for clients. You know how they are standing there and you go, Can I help you? I said to myself, wait a minute. I'm spending a thousand feet money, thousand and thousand to bring the client here. What did you bring me? So what I did is this. I got the conference room, I put a desk around the wall with telephones. I'll tell you what, you can have my clients if you bring me one of yours. That's what I did. They went on the phone, Joe, seven o'clock I have an appointment, here's the phone number. I call them up, what time are you arriving? I know it's legit. So I got them working, because most of us don't work because <laughs> when you have a store, you open the store, and you're the CEO, and you run the business, Somebody's got to manage you too. You got to be hard on yourself. You have to be hard on yourself. See, a lot of us work from home. When you was there a day you didn't see me in the office? Uh, very rarely do I ever see you not Don, in the office. I always see you there. Don can retire. I can retire. We have ethics. We have things that we need to do. We have goals to meet. Anybody in this room has in his pocket a goal? Didn't know how much he wants to finish this year with? Yep. Are you goal oriented? And if you're goal oriented, you know what the goal is? And if you do have it, how are you gonna reach it? What are you gonna do? These are the things, these are the things down to the fundamentals that, that sometimes we don't wanna talk about because that means I have to work now. Yes, you do. You have to work. And then we have in March a nice luncheon. We have a nice luncheon. And they call people to come and get some trophies. And then they announce the 49,000 ones or the 35,000 ones. And I'm looking at them. Why? You have two legs, you don't have crutches, you don't have a wheelchair, you speak English. What's wrong? Why should you not make a million? 800, 500. Why? Abby, anybody come into my office and ask me a question, didn't I not help them? I help everybody. I'm sure if you go to Dan, Dan will help you. I will. You sure will, because you're that kind of person. We are here to help each other. You have to pay me, though. <laughs> <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is, we don't steal nothing, we borrow things. So the thing is that I got, I borrow a lot of things in my lifetime. So what I want to tell I just really want to, down to, to nitty gritty. I'm very hard on myself. I'm in my office every day. I'm always there at 9 o'clock in the morning. And I have a list of things I have to accomplish. And if I didn't, I don't go home. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put people to work. I'm going to help them out. I'm going to be there when they write a the contract. I'm going to be there. When they want to write a contract, I'm going to help them out. It's time for me to give back. That's what I decided. It's time for me to give everybody back. Why not? Yeah. Who's going to tell me I'm crazy? I want to help everybody. All right, any last questions? All right, thank you, Joe. We appreciate it. <laughs> okay.